I've always wanted a camera that feels like it belongs on a Star Trek bridge. And this one kind of does. In today's video, we're taking the Nikon ZR on a mission, and that's on a full-size Star Trek bridge. Hey everybody, Jeff Fagan here. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the Nikon ZR and take a run through of the different codecs in the camera. I also wanna thank KNF Filters for sponsoring today's video. Now, there's been a very big debate and I completely understand that really, R3D is the only way, the only codec to be filming on the Nikon ZR. Now, me personally, I've only been filming in R3D because that's the reason I bought this camera is the fact that it is a mirrorless camera that can shoot red raw in the R3D codec. I would like to be able to use some of the other codecs, especially the H.265, codecs that use a lot less memory. They're just a lot less intensive. As we've seen in a lot of other videos, some of those other codecs, you take a hit in the quality. So in today's video, we're gonna run through all the codecs because I wanna be able to use the Nikon ZR not only for film production, like we're here on set, but I also wanna use it for content creation, for podcasts, and in those scenarios, I don't always wanna be filming in R3D. Now, this is the perfect place to test it because we're going to be lighting everything and we are going to put the H.265 and some of the other smaller codecs to the test to see if we can get away with using them. This is a magnetic filter system that I've been using with Saray's anamorphic lens. It just sits on here magnetically and it has not only a VND filter, but it also comes with a mist filter. Let's get into some of this footage.
So for this test, I use Sigma's 24 to 35 and Saray's 50 millimeter Astra autofocus anamorphic lens. Now the 24 to 35 has been great because I've been using it for years on all of my full frame cameras because it's an EF lens and it's super adaptable. And then the Saray anamorphic autofocus lens is pretty much the first of its kind for full frame cameras. So it was nice to put it on the ZR, see how well it worked. And I have a short film coming out that I shot on that, that you will see here on the channel pretty soon. But let's talk about the footage. Now, I have to say, it was really nice to be able to shoot all the different codecs in this camera because it doesn't just shoot R3D. It shoots ProRes RAW, shoots NRAW, shoots ProRes 422, and of course, H.265. Now the H.265, it clearly wasn't as good as something like even the R3D, ProRes RAW, any of that. But not only did I test it on this little test footage here, but I also shot a few YouTube videos for myself in H.265, and it was interesting to see, especially if you shoot with the colors pretty much baked in, most people don't notice the difference, and it's a lot easier on their hard drive uh, in their storage space. And so, although I wasn't planning on using H.265 as much as R3D, since I've pretty much been shooting everything in R3D on this camera, I'm definitely going to use it more when the, I guess I would say the colors, the image quality isn't as critical. But let me know what you think about the footage, and do you want to see any other tests? I do have a short film and some BTS of the slash shoot of the Axonar sets, where I use the Nikon ZR pretty much in R3D for everything else outside of these tests and some of the YouTube stuff that I filmed. I'm looking forward to coming out with my full review on the Nikon ZR within the next month or so. But if you have any questions, anything maybe I didn't go over in today's video, let me know in the comments below. And if you got knowledge and value out of today's video, please make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to keep up to date with the latest videos on the channel. Now, I want to thank Jim Ross and his daughter Misako for coming out and helping me in today's video. They were really grateful. I'm going to leave a link to Jim's channel in the description below as well. He's been in the industry for many, many years, and he's been helping us out on a lot of these Axonar shoots as our gaffer, and he's done a fantastic job. It's really been an honor to work with him, so make sure to check out Jim's channel in the description below. And until next time, my name's Jeff Fagan. Thank you for joining me as always, and I will catch you in the next video.